Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com and uh, this is kind of a uh, rest in peace video to a what I thought was a great uh, unique uh, game designer uh, Kenji, Kenji Eno, I'm probably pronouncing his name extremely Americanized um, he had done the, the D series uh, Enemy Zero and D2 and he was part of the Warp Warped? I think it was Warped um, video game company. He also did a company called Super Warp or Super Warped, I believe it was. And um, then he started doing music and little programs for vending machines, I believe. Um, he was only 42, I think. I read about this the other day uh, today, actually online. I just found out about it. it. Happened five days ago, and I was kind of shocked because I had been looking into. I'd watched the um, Happy Video Game Nerds great, great video on the D series and Enemy Zero and. D2, and he spoke a lot about uh, Ken J. Eno, and I really, really thought it was interesting, and I looked him up not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago, and then he happened to, I found out today he passed away from, uh, I believe they said it was high, high blood pressure, hypertension type thing with his heart. Um, one of the, the things he did I, I thought was really funny was he had released D on the um, 3DO and the PlayStation 1. I don't believe he released it on the Saturn. I think that was it, just the, the PlayStation 1 and the 3DO and I think PC. And, excuse me, he uh, he was pissed off at Sony because Sony had released the game in uh, limited numbers. So even though the game might have sold better because it was a horror game and Resident Evil was pretty big at that point, I think, I think that Resident Evil was out. Let me check before I give you guys misinformation. And... Resident Evil was out in, no, Resident Evil was in 1996, um, D was out in 1995, so I take that back, it came out first, um, anyway, um, they put out D on the PlayStation 1, and Sony had put it out in limited numbers, and he, Eno was pissed off that they had done so, because he thought it would have sold better, and it probably would have, it was a very cool title, and, um, so he ended up going to a Sony conference at, um, I guess when he was looking to release his next game in the series, which was Enemy Zero, and that was on the Saturn, uh, that would come to be on the Saturn, that was, um, he, he started announcing at this conference, and then the, the, lo the PlayStation logo came up at the end of the Enemy Zero, I guess, trailer, and then at the very end it morphed into the Saturn logo, and then they, they shut him off and flipped out and threw him out and he burnt his bridges, and they never, uh, he never released anything for Sony again, which was pretty, pretty ballsy and funny all at once, so kudos to him for being a Sega guy after all that. He then released D2 on the, the Dreamcast, which was um, initially supposed to be uh, on the M2 system, which was a 3DO successor, which never came to be. So he pulled it off the M2 and he made it on the Dreamcast. I had yet to buy it and play it. I had seen a friend play it years ago, I think. I think I saw D2 at his house. Enemy Zero I just watched a lot of videos on. Um, D1, I have a good, nice memory of my friend Nicky and me, um, and his his brother Michael. We I went to his house when I lived in the Bronx, and he had a PlayStation, and we were checking out you know, all these horror games he had. He loved horror stuff, Resident Evil and all that. And he popped in D and really hadn't seen anything like it before. It was sort of like FMV, but you know, rendered. It wasn't uh, it wasn't real people. It wasn't digitized. And um, you'd go around in this house in real time, and you couldn't pause the game. I think you had like two hours to beat it. And you had to go through it and, you know, open certain things, get certain items, go through certain ways, use items at certain points. And if your time ran out or if you did things in incorrect order or something, you would eventually die. Um, so that was a really cool memory of playing this really creepy game at my friend's house and creeped out as a, a kid. I must have been about, I don't know, maybe 13 when I played it. I don't really remember. Um, so that, that was cool. I have a fond memory of, of the first D game and I never really played Enemy Zero because I didn't have a Saturn for long, and uh, D2 I've yet to get, like I said, I hope to get that. Um, the other co cool thing was, he had he had made um, characters overlap in these three games, but they're like loosely connected, and the last names are, and the backgrounds of the characters are all different, so I think the, the girl in it, her name is Laura, and uh, I forget what her last name was, but her last name is different in, in the games. So you don't know if it's the same person or, but it looks, you know, a lot like her and sounds a lot like her. So that was always interesting. So I was very saddened to hear that he had passed away. 
Um, I had looked him up recently, as I said, and I really was looking forward to see if he had done anything in the future or will do anything in the future. He was working on, uh, he had did a Wii title as well, something about uh, cubes. I forget what it was called. I'll tell you right now. Uh, he died February 20th, 2013, due to heart failure, brought up by hypertension. He was 42. That's very young. Um, he was with the company Warp and then FYTO, I think it was from yellow to orange. Um, it was a Wii game called You, Me, and the Cubes. I don't know of that. And he did contract work for iPhones and touchpads. Um, and I know he did a lot of music. So uh, hats off to him and uh, sad. It's sad, and sadly we lose someone in the game industry that had a very unique mind and a, a different take on things, so uh, that was really it. I just wanted to touch upon it, and rest in peace, Kenji Eno. Thank you for your contribution to the gaming industry, and guys, hope all is well. Take care. It is Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GraveSoundEntertainment.com. Be good.